Breaking news into NFL Live. The Bengals' Joe Burrow is out for the remainder of the season after suffering a torn ligament in last night's loss to the Ravens. Burrow exited the game in the second quarter after throwing a touchdown pass and then doubling over in pain after releasing the football. Here's quarterback and coach. The biggest news will be with, with Joe Burrow. You know, he had an acute injury yesterday, um, likely on the play before before his last one, um, where he tore a ligament in his wrist that will likely require surgery and require him to be out for the rest of the season. So we're still gathering more information on that, but that, that seems to be where it's headed right now. So that's the news. And, and uh, you know, just talking to guys on the team, uh, excited to rally around Jake. And we've got a lot of great players on this team. And so... Um, excited to see this team really band together for these last seven weeks and, and find a way. Yeah, it's tough. You know, you work you work so hard for for seasons and moments like these. So when you know, whenever you get hurt and it it ends it early, it's it's tough to tough to handle. But you know, that's part of the game. Been through it before, so just got to grind it out. Yeah, he certainly has. Uh, hi, everybody. Hannah Storm here, Dan Orlovsky, Ryan Clark, and Jeff Darlington, who's there in Kansas City. An all-too-familiar scenario for Joe Burrow. You feel for him as a person. Uh, Jeff, what more can you tell us about the injury? You know, it's interesting, Hannah, because you did hear there from Zach Taylor saying that it is a torn ligament in his wrist uh, and also Burrow confirming that the likelihood is that he will need surgery. That seems to be the way it's headed. He confirmed that as well. Uh, and you heard the stoic nature with which, with which both guys were really discussing that injury. I can tell you I was speaking with another member of the Bengals coaching staff, and it, it is the same vibe. It is This is devastating and brutal. This is a bummer all around, but we've got to find a way. We aren't the only ones who lost a quarterback. And I guess that is the nature of the league right now. Within a one-week span, Deshaun Watson, a division rival, also going down with the season-ending injury. So I, I understand when you hear the tone of their voices, they're saying it almost robotic what is obviously a brutal season-ending injury, but this team knows that they owe it to everybody else, including Jake Browning, who will be in their quarterback, to try to continue to win games and yeah. take over this division. Right, who's never started an NFL game in his career, but again, a similar scenario. This is the sixth starting quarterback, Dan, that we've Jeez. seen go down this season, yeah. and it's been a litany of injuries for Joe Burrow as well. Kind of lay out the scenario going forward, if you will, for the Bengals. Well, this is awful for the Bengals. It's awful for the NFL. This is one of, I mean, like me, he's one of my favorite players to watch. I think he's one of everybody's favorite quarterbacks to watch because like, when it comes to just pure pocket passer, pure pocket, like, progression guy, he's the best in the NFL. And to lose him is like losing kind of that new age Tom Brady type of guy. We know the moments that he endures or in, in loves as well. And, Hannah, if you think about it, like, the calf injury happens. And then it's, can they survive the calf injury? And all of a sudden he yeah. comes back and it's, well, maybe they can survive it. And then they get to three and three on the bye. And even though he can, can barely move. And then two weeks ago, they start playing their best game. I mean, right. you can make the case that the San Francisco game two weeks ago was the best yeah. game Joe Burrow's played in a while. And it's like, okay. And we talk about these windows, right? Mm -hmm. Because this was a massive window year for the Cincinnati Bengals. There's question marks about T. Higgins' future. And are they going to be able to afford everybody? And to lose it off of in two injuries, it's you just think about it. And I know everyone's going to say they have a chance. They don't. This offense is built around Joe Burrow, as it should be. And it's just this is the, like the, the really like sad part of being a fan of guys is you don't get to watch them play in their like huge prime window. But this is football, yeah. right? Tom Brady was able to be so successful for so long because he was healthy. If you go back to 2008 when he gets the knee injury in the first game against the Kansas City Chiefs, which eventually makes a rule that you can't hit quarterbacks below the knee, that's a year the New England Patriots missed out on the playoffs. They were still an 11-5 team, but they weren't the team they were with Tom Brady because when you have these franchise quarterbacks, when you have sort of these transcendent players at the position, everything rides on their 
their arm and their legs. Yeah. And so for Joe Burrow, a guy who plays with toughness, who we watch come back from a severe knee injury as a rookie into his second year, bringing his team to the Super Bowl, this is devastating. It's also devastating for the Cincinnati Bengals fans. Think about their yes. best year with Carson Palmer. He has a knee injury in the wild card game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they never return to that same sort of glory. And now with Joe Burrow in this transitional year in which Dan spoke about, is now not only endured the calf injury, but may be out the rest of the season requiring surgery on his wrist. And this team, no matter how good Jake Browning is, will not be a playoff team, will not be a championship team, will not be a Super Bowl team. And you just don't get these years back. Yeah, so, <laughs> like, I think... Just want to clarify that it is sure. definitive news. He is out for yeah. the rest of the season. Definitive. So that, sorry, that's, yeah. yeah, that's an absolute. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Dan. So I don't know if this year is an anomaly with starting quarterbacks because they, they've never yeah. been more protected. And these are the reasons why, as much as so many fans and all of us hate some of the, oh, my gosh, another roughing the passer penalty, these are those moments that remind us because you sit there and go, well, the Bengals are kind of done without Joe Burrow. So that's my first question. And my second thing, and – Again, I love this guy. He's one of my favorite guys to watch. And no one's championed him more. <laughs> but now this is the second season in four years is in, in his NFL career where he is going to suffer a season-ending injury. He's hit a lot, Dan. Well, hit I, a lot. And now that's <laughs> going to be Not a exactly protected. Yeah, I mean, you go back to there. his first two seasons, he was beat up more right. or as much as any quarterback. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of this. Um you know, they've, they've got to figure out how to keep them healthy. Yeah. You know, that you saw that list of injuries. I mean, every mm -hmm. there's big injuries. So, Joe's got in his camp and that organization's got to figure out a way to to keep this young man healthy because he is a, a face of this league. Well, you think those are some questions. There's some more questions, and the NFL has questions about another right. issue regarding this injury because we saw Joe Burrow with a wrist wrap before the game and Zach Taylor and bro also had to address that today. This is a completely different different thing. Um, you know, it's not uncommon for guys to wear compression sleeves on plane because when you go up to that altitude, you, can, you know, things can swell up. I had, you know, football, you have a lot of bumps and bruises. This is a, a completely new injury. Jeff, I want to go back to you on this. Uh, what can you tell us about the NFL's investigation now into the fact that Burrow was not on the injury report when the team posted and then subsequently deleted this picture of him getting off the bus, appearing to wear a wrap right. on that right hand? And you just heard his explanation. Well, Hannah, the NFL is, in fact, investigating this matter. They take these types of injury compliance issues very seriously. So it is likely that Zach Taylor and Joe Burrow, who have not yet been contacted by the league, will have to explain probably the way they just did exactly what happened here. Now, we can go back to a precedent. Back in 2019, the NFL fined the Steelers uh, $75,000, Coach Mike Tomlin $25,000, for violating the injury report policy by not accurately listing Ben Roethlisberger on their report. So there is a precedent for this, likely a heavy fine, uh, potentially if the NFL finds that they did not comply with the injury report. But of course, you did hear Joe Burrow there. Whether you believe it or not, whether the NFL decides they believe it or not is, is really the matter of whether, in fact, he was wearing a, a compression sleeve that had nothing to do with the torn ligament that occurred shortly after in the game. Yeah, I, I'm really interested to see what our quarterback has to say about that explanation. Yeah, I mean, I, I think with the short week, I've seen guys wear compression sleeves all the time for a bunch of different things, especially when they're forced to being fly, or flying on airplanes. I'm going to take Joe at his word. I know Zach Taylor. I would be surprised. I'm not saying yes. I would be surprised if this was something that he was hiding from the NFL. That, that's or that just, he would let his quarterback play hurt, correct. which is the implication. That's here. my experience right. with Zach Taylor I, I, and Brian Callahan, their offense coordinator. I know those two men. I know what they're about. Um, wearing a compression yeah. sleeve, I bet you half of their team had something or some form of something like that on. Even on a short flight sure. like that. Yeah. Okay. RC? Hey, man. Guys, it doesn't matter if they let him play hurt. Everybody plays hurt. All of these folks are hurt. 
Joe Burrow's hurt. Joe Mixon is hurt. Jamar yeah. Chase is hurt. T. Higgins is hurt. Everybody's hurt. When you get to this point of the season, we all have something. That's not what this is about. They aren't searching to see the NFLPA isn't going to file a grievance on Joe Burrow's behalf as if the Cincinnati Bengals tricked him into playing. That's not what this is about. This is about betting, y'all. Yeah. This is about setting lines. This is about what we do on this show every day when they're saying, Dan, over or under. Dan, will so-and-so win? That's why they do this. That's why they make us do this. That's why they want to make us predict. And so now, when you don't tell the world that Joe Burrow may have a pre-existing injury, now they can't set the lines where they want to set them, and that's an issue. That's the reason that a Patrick Mahomes is on the injury report for having an illness versus the Denver Broncos, even though he's still going to play. Right. Now, could they just let tra uh, Patrick Mahomes play? Absolutely. But when you say that Patrick Mahomes has an injury or has an illness, now the line may change based on how effective they believe that he will be. Yeah. That's what this is about. That's why the CBA was negotiated in the way that it was to allow teams to prepare and lines to be set. Hey, we'll be doing all those over-unders coming up. <laughs> uh, to your point, all right, uh, the Bengals, <laughs> we do know, in seven games without Joe Burrow, they've only averaged 16 points, barely 150 passing yards in those games. So.